Uh, Representative Mellorain, do you want to um, start with the, well, we'll start with House Bill 7, since that's kind of the meat of the maps for your bill. Um, Ms. Smith, would you please read in House Bill 7? Members, this is House Bill Number 7 by Representative Mellorine. Um, it provides for the redistricting of the Supreme Court districts. Representative Mellorine, on your bill. Good morning, uh, members of the committee, and thank you um, for hearing the bill today. Uh, so House Bill 7 um, provides for a map with nine Supreme Court justices. Um, I have a constitutional amendment, which was uh, HB 13, I can discuss later. Um, but essentially what this does is the map that ties to my constitutional amendment. Um, in looking across the state and, and seeing some of the pushback that we've had at the seven person maps, um, it seems like a lot of the, the issues arise from geography and separating communities of interest and separating um, geographical regions. And some of the feedback I've, I've had is that certain areas of the state don't feel as if their interests would be represented in a seven-person map. Um, digging into it a little bit easier, uh, I feel a nine-person Supreme Court would uh, geographically represent um, the members of the state and the citizens of the state. Uh, I can tell you now geography was the, the thing I looked at most. Um, if you look at the map, it splits only five parishes. Um, it, it's compact. It, um, it has six um, majority white districts based on voting age population, two uh, majority black districts, and then the third is, is more of a purple district. Um, it is, and I have the breakdown right here if you hold on one second. It's actually my home district that we made as the purple district. It's District 9. So if you look at the voting age population across the, the state, um, the voting age population, well, let me start with the district first. So District 9's white voting age population is, is right under 57%. It's 35% black. And then the rest of the Asian, American Indian, and other uh, totals about 5 or 6%. Um, when you get into the voting age population across the state, uh, across the state it's about 59% white, 31% black, and then the, the remainder is either Asian, American Indian, or other. So as you can see, the proportion in that purple district of uh, voting age population whites is lower than the, than the state average or the, yeah, the state percentage. Uh, the voting age population for blacks is higher than the state. Um, and, and again, the key was to keep it as compact as we could. Uh, I know there is a, have been questions about what do other states around us look like? How many Supreme Court justices do those states have? I've done that research. Mississippi has nine Supreme Court justices. Uh, Alabama has nine Supreme Court justices. Georgia has the same. Now, when you move to our west, Texas has 18. Now, that's split nine in a criminal Supreme Court and nine in a civil Supreme Court. Oklahoma also has 14, with nine being on the civil bench and five being on a criminal bench. Um, so it would not be out of line. We would not be an outlier if we went to nine. Um, and also, uh, another question I've received is, well, what do those populations look like compared to Louisiana? Um, Alabama has more population than us. Georgia has more population than us. But Oklahoma and Mississippi both have smaller populations. Um, so we, again, would not be out of line by having a nine-member uh, Supreme Court. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Representative Mellorain. Uh, Representative Wright for a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Miller actually answered my question. I, I have been sympathetic to this idea for a couple of years and uh, just wanted to get a little layout of the other states because I know nine is not an outlier. That would that's that's kind of you know it's incongruent. It's congruent with with a lot of other states. So, but you, you answered that before. I, well, you answered it after I pressed my button. So, thank you. 
Representative Carter. Yes, uh, Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative, I'm trying to figure out why. Why are you aware that we're in litigation over seven two map? We're trying to yeah. resolve a seven two map. Yes, right. And and the Supreme well, and the Supreme Court has suggested a map that that uh, we voted out of here. So so that might resolve the litigation. That map that we voted out of here. Yes, and that brings up another one. So the, the second part, uh, or my second bill, is a constitutional amendment. Um, so obviously, and let, if, if hypothetically, if my bill passed, both of them, and then we pass a seven-member map, there would have to be some enabling language right. in mine and also some uh, a trigger language. Well, we would have to have, we'd have to have a constitutional amendment vote of people, and we would— Correct, Your Honor. And, and, yeah. and, and, but it's not going to resolve the litigation because your map create two minority district, black districts, and you, and the one is, is a, I guess you would call it an opportunity. To, I don't know if it's opportunity district or district nine has thirty three percent black registered voters, in it looks like, uh, but but you're still going to have the same issue that you have a third of the population, a third of nine is three, not two, so so you're going to have the same issue we're litigating right now. So, so your map don't resolve a dispute that exists. So if you look at the percentage, it, it's actually slightly less than a third, and, and it falls in that, that number where uh, I understand that it's it's about 31% black is the state population. Actually, it's 33%. I'm looking at the numbers I was I was given. In, oh, in my understanding is on, you look at the voting age population, uh, and if you look at the voting age population, it, it's 31, so it's not quite a third. And if you look at it, again, it comes as close as you can while keeping geography as the main component. It did factor in um, race breakdown, the map. Mm -hmm. um, again, it was not the only factor. Uh, I believe if you look at the Milligan case, uh, there is no bright line rule as to, you know, a percentage. It, it, it's, it talks about, the, as the Supreme Court obviously normally does, and you know this, they, they don't set forth bright line rules. Um, but again, it... The voting age population of the state is not quite a third. So then you get into the, the, the position where you're in here, where with a nine-member map, it doesn't easily, you know, it goes from either two to three, and, and it falls somewhere in between. Except there. Representative Jingles and other cases doesn't talk about uh, uh, voting age population so much as population. So so you got performance would be... be, be uh, you take and consider voting age population performance for performance factors, but uh, uh, the population of Louisiana is over 33 percent black. That's the third. Okay. So, so 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 if you base the population, uh, you have a, a still two out of nine. It's a, I mean, I would rather two out of seven than two out of nine. You understand what I'm saying? And so 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 so, I agree with you. Race is not should not be the primary factor. I, I, I have, that's what the cases say, but it can be a, a factor in order to achieve uh, uh, complying with Section Two. So I don't think this map going to comply with Section Two at all. We're going to have the going to have the same argument we got right now. So and we're again, this the same fight. As I've told the people um, that have asked, the uh, representatives that have discussed this with me, this is a starting point. Um, by no means is this what I'm saying has to be passed. Obviously, we would have to go through a constitutional amendment process. If you look at the, the HB 13 that I'm bringing, the election wouldn't be until November of this year, which would give us time to come back at a later point if we're unable to reach a bill, um, reach a map. Um, again, there's a lot of hurdles that it would have to clear even if we do pass the nine amendment. Okay. Thank you, Judge Sorry. Carter. Uh, Representative Mellering just on your question, and to uh, think you're accurate, uh, just on the, on the congressional side, Judge Dick has told us to focus on the voting age population, and I think that was similar to what Representative Thomas had mentioned as well. Um, I know the a, there is a difference um, on the on the court maps versus con congressional maps, but uh, you don't have the same one person one vote rule. But voting age population has been the, the key focus. Question for you on the other states. Do you know how many of them elect their Supreme Court justices statewide by any chance? Or is it by broken up by district? Some of them are broken. Some of them are appointed by a commission. Okay. Uh, for example, Oklahoma's are, are uh, appointed by a commission. Um, Mississippi, I believe, is elected statewide. Um, and I'm not sure about Georgia and Alabama. I looked, and I, it's slipping my mind right now. Okay. That's 
Thank you for that clarification. Representative Marcel for a question. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to try to get your name correct. Is it Mellon? Mellorine. Mellorine. Representative Mellorine, uh, please be patient with Representative Marcel on the oh, name I'm, pronunciations. Name, name pronunciations. She I'm and I have been working it. on this. I'm used to it. You guess. All right, Baloo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, so, sir, serious, all seriousness, your bill would increase the number of Supreme Court justices to nine? Correct. We're currently at seven. And we're currently at seven. So you're adding two seats. Correct. So how does this fix the litigation that we're currently in? Do you see this as... Uh, so the, the, the litigation we're currently in is over the seven-person map. Obviously, if you, if you change it and expand it to nine, you would need a new map, depending on what that map is. Um, and so how you, it, don't, you don't see this as being the same issue that we'll be fighting over since we're already saying that I know y'all saying a voting age population, but the argument is going to be that if you're going to increase it, then you need to increase the number of seats. Uh, I understand the argument, and, and, and what I'm saying is I, until we see a final map, that issue could be addressed in, in a final map. I'm not sure what— So your map is not a final map that no, you want to do? No, I've—this was a you map— just, that, that I thought was a good starting point, and if there are amendments this, to it, um, we so could look at it. So it's a starting point. So let me, let me ask you something. Again, geography was the main factor that I looked at, was keeping okay. compact districts. So how would these justices run? Sub-districts? Yes. So if you look, there, there are not, nine. Not statewide, huh? Because I know we got a bill out here to say everybody runs statewide. This one does not do that. This okay. one says you elect... Your, everybody that lives in District 9 elects the judge from District 9 and so on. Okay, and how do you, I, I'm, I was looking at your fiscal note, you know, they, they, they constantly, I don't, this is your first term, but Correct. they come up here every year and they ask for additional money and they say they don't have enough money. So adding two more seats would be more money, is that? Yeah, there's a fiscal note uh, that well, we received well, last, wasn't, last that, night. I'm sorry. I, I, I was looking at it, and and so what is it? What is your fiscal note saying? Uh, it looks like in in fiscal year 25, it'd be right over a million dollars. Uh, by fiscal year 20, 28, 29. Is that taking into consideration the judges and all of their staff and their offices and everything? Correct. Yes, ma'am. And that's for the two additional seats. That is because in in fiscal year 25, it's only a half year. If you look into fiscal year 26, mm -hmm. is that, that's the first full year, and it jumps up to, uh, I think, right under $2 million because there are some cost associated, some one-time cost associated with expanding offices, think, buying furniture, things I, like that. Right. I, th I think this is probably my first time kind of meeting you, so I, I would think that you might be a fiscal conservative, so I'm trying to figure out why we're trying to find additional money to spend on judicial seats when we're trying to fix what we currently have and they don't have enough money currently. I sit on appropriation. Yeah. Every year, every single year, they come and say they don't have enough money. So this would be, you know, on top of the already not having enough money. So I'm just trying to figure out why would we be going this route. What, what does this yeah, do? Representative Marcel, can I jump in real quick just because sure. I want to make sure everybody's, everybody's clear on this. Um, we are here in House Bill 7, and uh, so there's a, on the constitutional yeah. amendment side, there's a fiscal note on having the constitutional amendment, the election, and then from the number of judges, sorry, and then there's another one from the Secretary of State that's also um, in, your, in your packet as well. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was just trying to figure out. I'm so looking. Just, yeah, it is two different numbers. Yeah, it, it goes with actually the, the fiscal note I was just referring to goes with HB 13. And this one that we're talking about now, seven. I'm happy to answer it. I'll, we'll talk about 13 in a minute. Um, I'm happy to answer it now or then. And, and my final question, I, I'm going to let I'm going to let somebody else if somebody else has a question talk. Um, have you did you speak with the judges? Um, concerning this or is this something because when they came in here um they all agreed on the way to to fix the matter that that we're currently under in court so they've met have they met with you 
I've talked to several judges. Um, Are they in agreement with this? I, I can't speak for all the judges, and I don't want to speak for all the judges. I can tell you um, not all Supreme Court justices signed off on that map that was presented yesterday by, by Representative Johnson. I know my uh, Supreme Court justice from my area did not sign off on it. Um, so, to, again, I don't want to speak for every Supreme Court justice here and say yes or no, they're in favor of this. So when they came to this committee and said that they had come to an agreement, all of them, that's, that wasn't accurate? I, I'm not sure exactly what they meant by had come to an agreement. They may have come to an agreement to something else, but if you look at the, the letter that went out with the map, there were only five of seven justices that signed on to that map. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I would just like... I mean, I, I just, for someone's, someone else's position and area, we typically try to lean towards, you know, kind of what they would like overall. So when we're doing these major, this is a major change. I would consider this a major change. I agree. So I would think that, you know, you would get the support of most of the justices before we would move in this direction. But thank you for your work. I see you coming in, coming in, working on Appreciate it. Thank you. Rolling up your sleeves. Representative Carver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Mellorine, thank you for your work on this, and I appreciate the intent um, and the conversations you've had with the folks in Northwest Louisiana. And Representative Marcel actually uh, asked the question that I was planning to ask. I just, I, yesterday we had testimony from uh, Justice Crane, also an appellate court. Uh, Judge Guidry uh, was here. And then the governor's comments in the opening of special session just alluded to the fact that there had been some consensus on the court, not all of them. And I wondered if you had had the same feedback, but you answered the question to my satisfaction. So thank you. Representative Miller, and that clears the board. We do have uh, a one witness card in opposition not wishing to speak. Uh, Ms. Anaya Robinson with the ACLU of Louisiana. Um, you have an opportunity to close on your bill, Representative Mellorine. Yeah. Um, oh, excuse me. We have a technical amendment for your bill that yeah. we'd like to adopt first. Yeah. Ms. We Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, committee members, this is amendment set 52. It is online. This is a technical amendment just to literally fill in the blank, um, tying this uh, instrument, House Bill 7, to House Bill 13. Members, we have uh, amendment set 52 that I'll offer up. Uh, is there any opposition to this technical amendment? Hearing none, amendment set 52 is, is hereby adopted. Back on your closing, Representative Mellorine. Thank you. Um, I just appreciate um, the opportunity to present the bill. Thank you for your questions. Um, look, the reason why I started going down this road is I saw the issues that we were facing with a seven member map, seven justice map. Um, this is another opportunity or another option in order to alleviate some of those concerns. Um, I know there's a companion, essentially, bill running through the Senate that's a little bit ahead of mine. It was discharged from committee yesterday and uh, being taken up on the floor. So at this time, I'd like to just hold my bill here uh, and if we need to, come back to it. Okay. Representative Miller, I'm going to go ahead and uh, offer that we voluntarily defer Representative Mellorain's House Bill 13. Is there any opposition to that? Hearing none, the, the House Bill 13 will stay in here as amended. I'm sorry, House Bill 7. <laughs> sorry about that. House, I have both of them in front of me, Representative Mellorain. House Bill 7, will, will um, as amended, will we'll stay here in committee. So House Bill 13, Representative Mellorine, let's go ahead and just read it in, Ms. Ms. Smith. This is House Bill 13 by Representative Mellorine. It is a constitutional amendment, increasing the number of associate Supreme Court justices from six to eight. Representative Mellorine. Yeah, so this is, uh, if you look at the language, uh, it's very plain and straightforward. All it does is, is say we should have a chief justice and eight associate justices, uh, and it changes the number that concur, must concur to render an opinion from four to five. Um, that, that's really the change. It changes the numbers. It, it goes exactly with HB 7. Um, happy to answer any questions. Yes, so uh, I think we'll go ahead and hold that one here as well in committee. I'm going to make a motion that we defer this bill as well. Oh, Representative Wright, you have something real quick you want to add to this? 
Thank you. I, I wanted to jump in on the last bill when this came up in subject matter. I, I don't know if Representative Mellorin understand knows this, but my senator actually a couple of years ago had worked with some Supreme Court justices to increase it to nine. I want to say it, it was going to be two, definitely two, maybe three uh, majority minority districts as well. So this is not a foreign concept. Uh, and there was an interest in the Supreme Court and kind of now that might not have been everybody, but there was justices currently elected that considered this. So this is not out of left field. Thank you. Yeah. And, and again, this is not something I, I came up with on my own. Um, I looked around. Um, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, and so, again, if, if it is something that goes through, we can address those other issues. Um, I know, look, that's how we get this done. So thank you. Thank you. We also had just red card, Miss Anaya Robinson, ACLU of Louisiana in opposition as well. Thank you, Representative Mellorine.